All right, today we're starting out with some cowboy candy. I'm using about half of our jalapenos and half of store-bought peppers. Um, this hasn't been the best tomato and pepper year, so you know we're doing we're doing what we can. Um, there will be lots more jalapenos to come out of the garden, but I really wanted to get our first batch done and made. So I'm just going to get these sliced up and into the bowl. So we're going to get all of our ingredients, except for the peppers, into the pot and heating up to get that sugar dissolved and get our syrup started. I was working with a little over a pound of jalapeno peppers. I think it was about a pound and a quarter. And so I doubled the syrup recipe because a lot of times I feel like I don't have enough. So the normal standard recipe is one pound of peppers, one cup of sugar, half a cup of apple cider vinegar, a teaspoon of chili powder, half a teaspoon of turmeric, and a half a teaspoon of ground ginger. And I'll get that stirred up. Once it's come to a boil, the sugar has dissolved and it's starting to look syrupy. It's time to get the peppers added. They're going to cook for about four minutes. Um, they will darken up quite a bit. And then all that's left to do is jar them up and put them in the water bath canner. So you can see I ended up with three half pints of the cowboy candy and then an extra jar and a half of liquid. Maybe that's a little too much for some people, um, but honestly, that half jar went in the fridge and Jared's already been using it. He'll put that on sandwiches, on pizzas, like so many things. Um, it's really versatile once you start actually using it. So these go into the water bath for 10 minutes for half pints or 15 minutes if you're using pints. Um, this is one of the favorite things that we make every year. This and salsa, I would say, are the two big ones. And there's so much stuff you can do with cowboy candy. Like, we use it like a condiment. Um, you can do, like, the cream cheese and cracker thing with a little bit of this on top. Um, I've seen people put it in cornbread or on top of cornbread. You can make cocktails with it, a little spicy margarita or something. Options are endless. All right, we're gonna get some more peas blanched and frozen. It's the same exact process um, as one of the previous videos, so I won't drag you through that. And we're also going to freeze some cherry tomatoes. So literally all I'm gonna do is give these a rinse, remove any of the you know remaining stems, and literally, I'm going to throw them in this bag that I've already started um, and chuck them in the freezer. That's all it is, too. That's all there is to it. Um, what we like to do with the cherry tomatoes mostly is like just like a pan sauce. You can throw them in a frying pan with some garlic and oil and seasonings, whatever you want, um, and make kind of like an impromptu light tomato sauce. The other thing we really like to do is that viral feta um, oven sauce recipe that uh, you put on pasta and stuff. The kids actually will eat it as well. And when I make it, I throw in like zucchini or broccoli or mushrooms, like whatever we have, um, just to kind of amp up the nutrition and the vegetable content. And it's a super simple meal that now I will be able to enjoy in the winter too. All right, we've got another bowl of ugly here. Mostly these were ball bills and split um, bulbs. They were some test bulbs that uh, I pulled a little later and they've just been hanging out outside. I haven't even cleaned the roots off of them yet, but... I think we're just going to do the same thing that we did and mix this in the food processor with a little bit of olive oil and put these in the ice cube trays and in the freezer. So I have um, 
some green peppers picked from the garden. It's raining again today, so I wanted to get these out of the garden. Anything that I've been leaving to ripen has been, this is at the community garden, has been getting eaten either by bugs or rodents or something, I don't know. And there's a few jalapenos in there. There's a couple more over there if I feel like I need them. But basically I've set these aside because I'm gonna make hot pepper jelly. Normally I make it red with red jalapenos and red peppers, but um, ripening stuff isn't working out this year. So we're gonna go with green hot pepper jelly this year. I also have this overgrown patty pan. I like to eat them smaller than this and this overgrown zucchini. I definitely like to eat these smaller than this, but these will be good just um i will chop them up into smaller chunks take out any of the really large seeds and i will shred them and get those into the freezer for um, future sauces and um, zucchini loaves and things like that the other project i want to get done today um i've got my my um fermenting lid out. I gotta find a jar here in a minute um, and a pebble here. I want to make some sauerkraut. We purchased a large cabbage and I want to make um, a two liter jar of sauerkraut with it and I also want to make some egg rolls. So, so those are our projects on the docket for today. I don't know if they'll all get done but we're gonna get as many done as we can. All right, coffee is made. We've got our different appliances required. All of the vegetables are washed and I'm just gonna start to chopping. I'm gonna start with the peppers because these are gonna be the quickest and easiest. Um, they're gonna get blended anyway, so really I just have to core them and chunk them up. I'll spare you the assault on your ears. I'm just shredding up that zucchini and patty pan um, and then we will get it drained. This is just a little um, food processor that we purchased. It works well for us. You can actually get quite a bit done in it and I love it. So I'm just gonna stick this zucchini in a colander and let it drain for an hour or so um, before we bag it up and freeze it and that'll be it. All right, I'm gonna get this blended just so I can get the blender part set aside and then we're gonna start on the cabbage. But to this, um, I'm just going to add one cup of vinegar. Uh, does anyone else have this problem? All of the numbers have faded. You can kind of see them. I hate that. If anyone knows a brand that this doesn't happen to, I'd be forever grateful. So, there's the one cup mark. And that goes. 
We're at 929 and we're motoring, so I'm happy with how the day's going so far. Just gonna blend this until it's fairly smooth. And I'm just gonna leave that there for now. All right, here's my big boy cabbage. Um, I didn't grow this one, we bought this one. I believe it was like around six pounds, something like that. And <clears throat> I've removed the outer leaves and I'm going to get it all chopped up. We're going to use some of it in a two liter jar to make sauerkraut. Um, there's math involved with sauerkraut. So I am going to weigh this bowl. I'm going to weigh the bowl plus the cabbage as I get it cut and shredded. And I'll subtract the weight of the bowl to get the weight of my cabbage. And then I will figure out my 2% salt, which is what we will add to the cabbage to make the sauerkraut and that is it. So I'm just gonna start chopping. All right, we've got half of our cabbage chopped up here. I see a few that are a little too wide here. Um, and I've done the math. So we've got almost 1300 grams. Um, and that means our 2% salt is gonna be around 26 grams. So I'm gonna weigh out 26 grams and sprinkle that over the top. Okay, here's my 26 grams. I'm using pink Himalayan. You don't wanna use anything that has um, iodine in it. And I'm just gonna sprinkle it over the top. And then I'm going to massage the cabbage, but I'm gonna put some gloves on first. All right, you can of course do this um, without gloves and just very clean hands but I find the salt a little abrasive sometimes, and so I'm gonna do it this way. This is gonna be hard at first until um, the cabbage starts to break down and release some water, but just keep at it. All right, I was at that for a few minutes. You can see how much the volume has gone down already, and you can see the glossy glossy water on top of the cabbage. There's water starting to accumulate in the bottom and that's what we want. So I'm gonna like cover this with a dish towel and set it aside while we work on some of the other stuff. Okay, our zucchini's been draining for about an hour and it's pretty dry on top. So I'm gonna go ahead and start bagging it. These are about two cup bags and I'm just gonna keep filling until we're out of baggies or out of zucchini. All right, there we go. We have five two cup portions for the freezer. All right, we're switching gears for a few minutes because my dough has been rising for two hours. This is um, like a hybrid sourdough. There's also some yeast in it. Um, no knead bread that has become my favorite. It doesn't take all day to make. Um, you make the dough, it rises for two hours and then you bake it. This is one that I made yesterday. This is all that's left. Um, it's friggin delicious. It's so, um, like if it focuses here, it's really soft. It's an awesome, awesome bread. If you're interested in seeing that, let me know in the comments and I'll dedicate an, its own video to that if anyone's interested. All right, I'm waiting for the oven to preheat for the bread. So I'm gonna go ahead and get our sauerkraut kraut jarred up. It's uh, been sitting here for a while. There's lots of juice in the bottom. Um, this is actually a muddler for like making mojitos, but I'm gonna use this to help me kind of 
shove it down into the jar. So I'm gonna just start getting this cabbage in there. And once I get some in there, I'll start trying to really pack it down. You kind of want it as tight as you can get it. Releasing more juices in the jar, so that's a good thing. We should have lots of juice. If you don't have enough liquid, you can make up um, a 2% solution, just water and salt, and top up your jar if you need to. There's my oven, that's good timing because we're just about done this. All my cabbage down there. I'll use my muddler. I saved some leaves of cabbage to kind of put in here and hold, hold all the little pieces down. You want everything submerged. to kind of help that stay down. I'm going to put my pebble on there. I'm going to use a paper towel and just kind of wipe around the inside for any little bits. just to kind of help ensure we don't have any mold issues or anything. And I'll wash the outside of this jar. And then I'm just gonna put my, um, I think these are called pickle pipes, and it's it has a little vent hole in the top so that air can escape as it is fermenting. And that's all there is to sauerkraut. This is just gonna sit on the counter for until it tastes sour enough, basically. So um, I've seen people do it for as little as four days, as much as like three, four weeks. I think the last time I made it, I fermented it for two weeks and Jarrett thought that it could be a little sour, more sour. So, um, you know, we might go a little longer this time, maybe three weeks. We'll just taste it as we go. While the bread is breaking, I'm just gonna get the rest of this cabbage chopped up and we'll start the egg rolls and make the hot pepper jelly after lunch. It's just about 
11 now. Um, the bread will be done around lunchtime and it'll probably take me at least a half an hour to get this chopped up and the kitchen cleaned up and then we'll be fresh for after lunch. All right, we're a little bit ahead of schedule, so I'm gonna go ahead and start the filling for the egg rolls. Um, I shredded a couple carrots along with the chopped cabbage. I'm gonna just stir fry that in this wok with some um, sesame oil and curry powder. I think the recipe I have calls for like two teaspoons. We use way more than that. Um, I just, I don't measure, I just eyeball it. And then once it's kind of wilted down some, I'll add a little bit of soy sauce mixed with some cornstarch and that will like thicken it up. Just out of the oven, I don't know if you can hear it crackling or not. Over the dishwasher. It's a beaut. All right, this was in the afternoon by this point. You can see I have finished my egg roll filling over in the blue bowl on the left. Um, I had added two pounds of ground meat to that as well. Um, and I'm, I've made lunch, I've cleaned up after lunch. You can see on the clock, it's three o'clock and I've been going all day and I'm getting tired and I made a crucial error, guys. I'm making my hot pepper jelly here and I walked away at the wrong moment and it foamed up and spilled over and made a big giant mess on the oven. It was all down the front. Um, I wish the camera had been rolling because I would 100% have shown you guys. I'm sure it was hilarious. There was smoke everywhere, but I managed to salvage most of the jelly um, and I cleaned up what I could. And um, by that point, I, I think you can, I think I took a little video right before I fried the egg rolls, but I did not get most of that process filmed. I, the tank was empty by that point. Um, so hope you forgive me, but I will walk you through a little bit here. You can see I've got a cloth trying to soak that mess off and here's my finished, my finished jelly jars. I probably lost one in the mess, but that's not too bad. I'll take it. So here I've got my oil heating up. Here's some of the egg rolls. I think in total we ended up with like six dozen this was about two-thirds of them i did have to go get another package of egg roll wrappers i'd only purchased two packages um but i fried them up and i'll show you everything together all right guys we made it through the end of the every bit counts challenge this is the end of august um, it's really only the beginning of our canning season. Like most of the tomatoes are still green on the vine. We are a little bit behind, but that's okay. Um, so this is what we got done in the final week. Um, we did a batch of hot pepper jelly, had a minor disaster, got it cleaned up. I think we ended up with nine little jelly jars. That's awesome. We've got like 10 cups of shredded zucchini. I continued to dry herbs. We've got a full um, parsley now and half a, half a pint of basil as well. Um, we did some more of the garlic for the freezer. I've been using it. It's super convenient. I'm loving it. We've also started freezing cherry tomatoes and continued freezing peas. We have an absolute mountain of egg rolls. I think there are there are eight in each of these bags. So we're 70 plus egg rolls. We'll be eating those all winter. Um, we got a batch of sauerkraut going on. We did some cowboy candy and we even had some syrup left over that I was able to jar as well. So I think it was a pretty productive week. Um, I think it was a pretty productive month. By no means did I get something preserved every single day but I did my best and that's what the challenge is all about. So we will continue to do these things um, through September and I will bring you some more of that, though not every week quite like this. Um, I hope you enjoyed this first timer journey in the Every Bit Counts Challenge. I really enjoyed it. I thank you for joining me on that journey and I thank you for watching. We'll see you next time.